Hey there, welcome back to the Filthy Rich Writer YouTube channel. Now today, you are going to get a special sneak peek into how we coach our students in the Comprehensive Copywriting Academy. This, what's coming up, is one of our laser coaching sessions, which are 10 minute sessions designed to answer really any questions that students bring to us. Uh, now you might hear some CCA related terms, uh, things like Pitchapalooza, which is a student only event, um, but head down to the description below if you need a little bit more context. Now, our students are all in different states of learning copywriting and starting their careers and building their careers and all that kind of thing. And also, some of them want to be freelance, some of them want to be part-time, some of them want to be on staff. So you are going to hear a variety of different questions related to copywriting, business, all kinds of stuff. But I guarantee it's all going to be pretty helpful. So if you want to check out any other topics we cover, make sure you subscribe to the Laser Coaching Playlist. Exciting, right? Now, even though you are not the one in the hot seat, I'm positive you will still learn a lot. So without further ado, let's get to it. Hi, how are you? Hello, hello. good. How are you? Good. Yay. Okay. <laughs> Woohoo. Laser Coaching. Woohoo. Well, it's great because I feel like I needed like a hype up session. Oh, perfect. But I didn't think you'd just want to do that for 10 minutes. Um, I don't know. I'm kind of we're excited. here for I you. Just, so yeah, like if you, that's what you want, yeah, I'm going to deliver it. I'm going to start the timer because to be fair, that's what we've done for everybody else. Okay. Keeps us focused. Uh, this is also our last session. So if we need to hype you up for an extra couple of minutes, we will do it. We will. <laughs> um, so I'm hitting like some resistance with doing my own about me page mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I'm like I if you like track your website you probably have seen that I've looked at both of yours like a hundred times <laughs> don't use it as a guide necessarily yeah but not the best ones I will Full say don't, I didn't yeah. have an about page till I think last year I think I had an about section on my home page and didn't have an about page because I hear you. I hear you on how hard it is to write that page. What I would do, frankly, and this is Kate and I are constantly like, we really need to update our pages. We need to update our websites. But we're at the point in our careers where we don't need our websites very much. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, for student purposes, yes. However, what I would do, looking at website examples, go to the coaching call um uh, coaching call recordings, like, okay. uh, the one we did today, the recording is up there. Now there are mm -hmm. a couple of, couple of good ones to refer to. Um, and even sometimes even just hearing the feedback that we give other students about their about pages can like spark something, you know, inspire you. Yeah. yeah. Or even to look at ones of non-copywriters mm -hmm. that you feel like are, Ooh, this is a good about page. Mm -hmm. You know, do you need a mission statement? No, probably not. But you might be like, Ooh, maybe I'll section it where this, I want to get some fun facts to get some personality in it, but maybe I'll have that as a separate section and, mm -hmm. you know, lead with obviously benefits to your, to your clients and things mm -hmm. like that. But you might find different interesting ways to kind of section it out and break the content up that you want on yeah. there. So mm -hmm. how is the, how is the resistance coming up? Is it like is your brain saying things to you or are you just like, I don't want to do this. It's like, um, so I'll have like my Google doc open and then I write a couple words and I'm like, nope. And I delete them. Ooh. I know. Oh, it's the, them, but it's literally <laughs> like the and how. Oh, and okay. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> nothing super, super amazing. I would so start with outlining it. So again, if don't feel like you have to go straight into trying to get words on the page, think mm -hmm. of, okay, if, am I going to have my USP here or is it somewhere else on my site? Am I going to elaborate on this USP? What do I want the client to know in this main section? And even if it's just starting off, like, I want to have a headline here and putting headline. Mm -hmm. And then I know I'm going to have a section about this topic and putting mm -hmm. what that topic is going to be. And then mm -hmm. I do want my fun fact section that's down here. Uh, so literally starting with that. So then you have not a blank page, but you at least have, okay, I have a header. It's going to go there eventually. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, and then just start brainstorming ideas and kind of in the midst of the doc, I like to do side-by-side -side docs where I kind of have my clean, okay, header body, like it's eventually going to be pretty and beautiful. And then my, here's my mess doc of, mm -hmm. I'm just going to start spitting out ideas. What do I want to say? Here's a thought. And they might start to connect. They might not connect, but then you can start to shift things around within that document to say, okay, this this is actually feeling like this could be a good headline. Then you move it over into that clean doc and say, okay, let's keep it there for now and we'll see. Um, but working in that pattern so that you just don't feel like 
you have to get it all out at once and that it has to be magical all, all mm-hmm. at once. Mm-hmm. And then you can start to see those ideas though. of like, oh yeah, like I know I want to say something like this. This isn't quite it, but let me try to like do some versions. If you see some of my rough drafts, it's like iteration for like 20 lines on the same idea. Um, and I keep that cause I'm like, Ooh, I liked this word that I used down in this one. Let me try that in this one. And Mm-hmm. give yourself that space. Yeah. Well, and you, I'm sure you've heard us say that the, the ironic thing about the about me page is not really about you. Mm-hmm. It's yeah, like about it's what you can like do for the I'm client. Struggling. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I think sometimes if you, you almost kind of take yourself out of the equation or imagine that you are writing for mm-hmm. your client who mm-hmm. is Jennifer, and you are, you know this about her, you know what her USP is, you know that she's this fantastic copywriter. How would you position her? What would you say about her? What is her benefit? You know, obviously write it in the first person, but you can always go back yeah. and change it too. You can mm-hmm. write it in second person and go back and change or third, third person, third, Kate? Third, yeah, third person, third. then go back and change it to <laughs> first person. Um, but you know, it's, it's, uh, I think it can be really hard to sit down and like, I'm now I'm going to write copy. But to Kate's point, when you have an idea, the messages you want to get across, like, okay, it's about me, Paige. So I want to get across what makes me unique as a copywriter. So it's your USP. I want to get across how I can benefit them as a copywriter, why they should hire me. So you get some benefits and, you know, I want to get maybe a little bit of my personality across. I'm going to tell them, you know, that that it's really, you want to hit those three key points and how you do that. You know, you'll play with that a little bit and and go through various iterations. Um, But those are really the things that you want to get that someone who's getting to that page and who's considering hiring you, because that's what we need to keep in mind, right? Like Mm -hmm. the target audience and what the target audience needs to read to take that next step that we want them to take, which is to get in touch, to hire you. Mm -hmm. So when someone, a potential client putting on that, that target audience hat, when a potential client comes to your about me page, why have they come to the about you page? What do they want to know that they don't know yet from other pages on your website and what information on that page is going to make them go, Oh yeah. Okay. I like her. I'm going to get in touch with her. I want to talk more with her. So it's, 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 do not get me wrong. Writing about ourselves is the hardest thing you will do. Absolutely the hardest thing. So if you are, I don't want to say the word struggling, but if you, if you're like, um, that's the sound that comes out of my mouth. That's my copy sound. Yeah. Um, if, if you're feeling that first of all, know that that's completely normal. It is Mm -hmm. writing for ourselves is the hardest thing that we will do. Mm -hmm. But it's still no different than any other copy project. You still have an objective that you're trying to, and you know, it may it may help you to even take a couple of steps back and write yourself out a creative brief for mm-hmm. just this page. You know, if you're kind of like, I don't even know how to attack this, take it a couple of steps back and go, okay, what is my benefit to my target audience? Who is my target audience? What action do I want them to take? Mm-hmm. You know, what information will support this benefit? That kind of thing. And kind of um, thinking it through a little bit more objectively. Does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense. I think, I think I like Kate said, I'm going to start with an outline and then maybe even a creative brief, like you said. And I think creative that- brief first, then outline. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it will, um, it will help. Yeah, I think so. But I think part of it is because I feel like with my USP, so I've been doing like marketing and proposal writing mm-hmm. for the whole time. So I feel like it's like kind of implied that I can be a cop. Like, so I'm, I'm still struggle with the USP a little bit as well. So I think that it's probably starting. You could take something that's struggle. not even related to your professional experience is what I would explore. Mm-hmm. You know, is there, I know people have done it of like raising kids and like how challenging that is. I don't know if you have kids, but, um, or a trip you took that was changing and changed you in some way, or the fact that you are a knitter or that you love coffee. I don't know. You know, there's different yeah. And loving coffee is probably mm-hmm. not the angle I would yeah. take, volunteered but. in an orphanage in Tanzania right. or whatever. Yes. Yeah, yeah, it doesn't necessarily remember that it's different from a 
from a resume. On a resume, it's very much like, I have this experience and I'll do this. You are looking to, and it can be very tempting to, you want to be like, look, I've got all this marketing experience. Like, Mm -hmm. I know. But that might not be the thing that makes you unique as a mm-hmm. copywriter you know it yeah, may it, it may be you want to definitely explore it but it may not be the 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 traits that you have developed or, or one of the traits that you've developed that makes you look at projects from a different angle may mm-hmm. not have come from your marketing background you know it may have come from something else that you've done mm-hmm. if you want to work in the fact that you have X, Y, Z amount of marketing experience, or, or first of all, make sure this relevant, right? Mm-hmm. Um, cause it, just because it is marketing doesn't necessarily mean that a client's going to be like, Oh yeah. yes, you know? Um, but there you make, you can find other places that you too can work that in. If you feel like it really mm-hmm. makes a difference, but in your USP, um, it doesn't necessarily have to be your marketing experience that makes you, that sets you apart, yeah, that's true. you know? Cause it, it's, mm-hmm. it's, it may be, but go mm-hmm. through the full exercise. Don't immediately assume that because you have marketing experience, that's what that's what mm-hmm. will set you apart and will be the the piece for your USP. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And if you feel like you really want to get that in, because I know some people just like, I want them to know. <laughs> That could be part of your kind of fun fact area where you spin mm-hmm. that as a, a way of like, yeah, you that's know, a great point. I spent mm-hmm. 10 years doing this or whatever it is and and you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, don't know how you I spent ten, it, but... 10 years doing this, and here's why I focused on copywriting. You know, mm-hmm. and that's and you can, yeah, exa- I completely agree with that. That's a great point, Kate. Yeah, that's a really good um, idea. Getting it in, yeah. Mm-hmm. This is when my brain starts to turn on. Actually, I know. <laughs> <laughs> Get right back day. into it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, does that make sense? Yeah, that makes sense, and it's it's like kind of helpful because you guys have like these like you're just saying words, but like they're making me think so (laughs) good 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 yeah well and you know what that's the thing too is that sometimes just having a little bit of a fresh perspective Mm -hmm. or coming also too here's the thing you want it to be you want it to be your best foot forward right like you want it Mm -hmm. to be the best work that you can but there have been plenty of times that I've put stuff up on my website I've landed plenty of clients and then I've come back a year later read it and gone oh I need to change that, you know, like do the best that you can, um, Mm -hmm. put your best foot forward, but at the same time, don't let working on your about me page, Mm -hmm. keep you from making progress in other ways, do your best, but it's not carved in stone. Mm -hmm. You can come back and, and change it later. You can come back, you can come back and change it tomorrow. You can write it and then go back and change it tomorrow. Um, I wouldn't necessarily recommend spending your time on that, but, um, it's, you're not married to it. You're not, Mm -hmm. it's not carved in stone, put your best foot forward and move on to the next thing. And I think what you said is important. You know, you're like, you're just talking helps ask friends or family, even though they have no Mm -hmm. idea what they're doing when it comes to copy, just asking them certain questions. I do this with my Mm -hmm. husband all the time where it's like, Hey, I was like, you know, do you, I'm thinking of this phrase, what does that make you think of? Or what does that make sense to you? And he'll just say things and they might be completely unrelated, but just hearing something come back helps my brain go in another direction. Because at some point, I think often with resistance and roadblocks, we've been spending time just by ourselves in our own little bubble. And we just need something to get us like shaking up and and thinking different thoughts. So Mm -hmm. yeah, Mm -hmm. when you hit those walls, just, or even go to the Facebook group and be like, I, I need, you know, it could be the most random question. They don't yeah. need, necessarily need context, you know, get exactly. you thinking something different. Exactly. And yeah, don't true. be afraid to step away from it either. That's work on know. it, get up, walk away, do something different. Don't watch TV because mm. your brain doesn't work the same way, but like mm. go for a walk, do the dishes or make dinner or something. Have a glass of Let wine. your brain have a, glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> have a bottle of wine, have a glass yeah. of wine. Um, and let your brain kind of work on it in the mm-hmm. background. Cause it's, it, it sounds so silly, but, and I really, I should have marked this study cause I thought, ah, proof. Um, but <laughs> your brain really does do that work in the background, figure stuff out while you're doing something else. So mm-hmm. give your chance, give your brain a chance to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, that's good advice. Thank you. You're very welcome. Absolutely. Thank also, you. Also now for the hype portion. You can do yeah. this. You're a champion. <laughs> you can do this. We believe in you. You ever use Spotify? Put on that pitching playlist. It's even if you're not pitching. 
get hyped up. Yeah. <laughs> get some energy. I do. I should listen to that again. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. But ser- I don't do a good job. In all I'm seriousness, sorry. though, you can do this. You can figure this mm-hmm. out. This is not, this is, it's a, it's, yes, resistance pops up and it will pop up. Thank you, resistance. But like we say, that's, that's a good sign because it means you're heading in the right direction. Resistance wouldn't pop up if it's like, today I want to sit on the sofa. Resistance is not going to pop up. Resistance is going to be like, (laughs) excellent. Here's a bowl of popcorn, but it's going to pop up when you're heading in the right direction. So it's Mm -hmm. as much as it's like, it's a good thing. It's, it Mm -hmm. means you're heading in the right direction. And it means you are doing important things that are taking you out of your comfort zone and are going to take you in the right direction and take you toward your goal. So you are so headed in the right direction, even though resistance totally blows <laughs> really really sucks yeah. really sucks <laughs> however you can absolutely overcome it you can do this thanks you're very welcome you're welcome um but yeah thank post you. post uh, post in the facebook group mm-hmm. share and and when you're ready share your share your um about page. yeah share your about page share your site yeah. in the group coaching calls all that stuff yeah good i'm excited yeah. to see it hey. yeah <laughs> Thank you. Thanks for your help. Oh, you you. are so (laughs) welcome. Have a great rest of your day. All right. Thanks. You too. Welcome. Bye. Thanks for watching. Make sure you don't miss any tips, tools, or tactics for copywriters by clicking subscribe right now. And of course, you can always find us over at filthyrichwriter.com. We'll see you next time.